Well hello there everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really really well. In today's video I thought I would film a quick cheeky day in the life and this is kind of leading on from the morning routine and the evening routine which I put out a few weeks ago. If you haven't seen those then definitely go and check them out. But I've been working in my new job as a healthcare assistant or mental health support worker for about a month or so now and things are starting to feel really settled i'm also starting to feel really tired as you can tell from these beautiful gucci eye bags underneath my eyes but it kind of means that i'm getting into the routine with all of the different shifts that i'm doing now and so i thought it was the right time to put out things like my morning routine my evening routine and a day in the life however this video is going to differ slightly from my other routines purely because on those videos i did a typical morning and evening routine on a long day shift which is from 7.45 a.m. in the morning till 8 p.m. at night. So it's about 12 hours, 15 minutes, if I've done the maths correctly there off the top of my head. And I just kind of want to show that every day is completely different. So a lot of the time I do do those long days. I tend to do about two a week. However, I also really enjoy doing something called twilight shifts, which is what I'm doing today. And those differ dependent on the ward that you work on. So some wards will want you to do a 4pm till 11pm shift. Some wards will want you to do a 4pm till 12. I like doing them all. It also enables me to have all day, as I do today, to do really whatever I want. So as you've seen from the video so far, I've got up and I've done breakfast this morning. I had a really, really delicious bacon bagel. At the minute, my breakfast is kind of differing between bacon bagels and frosties, which neither of which sound great for the morning but honestly forget about health they are banging and i'm now reaching the point where i usually get up get myself ready and go out for a walk i did throw on like a t-shirt and stuff but i don't really know why because i'm going to get changed into gym wear and head out i just thought i would introduce this video today let you know that i'm doing a 4 to 11 pm shift and i'll bring you along with me throughout the day and show you what i get up to before during and after the shift as well Hello again everyone, it's been a few hours since I last spoke to you guys. I've been back from my walk for about an hour or so. It's now just coming up to two o'clock and during that time that I've been back, I've just been sitting on the sofa, chilling, relaxing because it's the last chance I'm gonna get to do so today. I've been having a little scroll on my phone and doing a little bit of editing. But now is the time that I usually start preparing a big, big, big lunch. And I say it like that because usually on these shifts, I get a half an hour break because I work more than six hours. However, rather than taking the break during the shift, I just tend to leave half an hour early. It means that I get home earlier, I get to bed earlier, I'm more refreshed the next day. The only downside to that is that I can't have a snack or a meal when I'm on my break. So for lunch, I have an enormous amount of food. And today we have actually got an M&S meal deal. We've got a very veggie pizza, which I'm about to put in the oven in a few minutes time. And that looks absolutely delicious. We also have some dough balls to go with it. If you haven't tried these from M&S, oh my goodness, you have to try them. These are incredible. I won't cook all of these because there's 12 in a pack, but I will cook most of them. And already in the oven, because I am getting a little bit pushed for time, I have some crispy battered mushrooms. I absolutely love these. I am a little bit upset that these aren't garlicky because garlic battered mushrooms, oh, they're just incredible. But I'll have a bit of garlic dip with mine instead from home. So I'm just going to carry on cooking dinner, sorting this out, having a little tidy up around the kitchen and I will catch up with you all later.
Hello again, everyone. Apologies for not being able to catch up with you whilst I was at work. I was hoping I'd get a quiet five minutes, but I really didn't. It was very, very hectic tonight. And as I mentioned earlier, on these 4 p.m. till 11 p.m. shifts, rather than take my half an hour break there, I tend to leave half an hour early. So it's now just gone 11 p.m. and I've arrived home. I just thought there was someone in my window then, but it was my shadow. That's really scary. I hate stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I thought I would just quickly run through what my shift was like this evening because a few of you commented on a previous video and wanted to know what the sort of responsibilities are of a HCA. But I basically went in at four o'clock, had a handover. First of all, you always, always, always start with a handover, which is given to you from the nurse. And that's basically just when the nurse explains how the patients are that day. They run through every patient that's on the ward. They might say, for instance, oh, Bob's been very settled today, nothing to worry about. However, John is... A little bit unsettled and he made a few threats to staff earlier so after having my handover I then went to my first allocation of the evening and by allocation this was a one-to-one -one, which means I'm one-to-one -one with the patient basically so wherever they go I go so if Bob goes outside for a cigarette I go outside with him and then for my second allocation from six till eight I was on a two to one which is two members of staff to one patient that usually happens when the patient is slightly higher risk that went okay it was a patient that I'm very familiar with however they can be quite abusive so it's usually quite a long two hours that you have to kind of push through then I had another allocation from eight till ten However, at this point, there was a crash call. And basically what a crash call is, they'll send one member of staff from each ward usually to a different ward to attend that crash call and help restrain the patient if they are particularly violent or at risk to themselves or others. And tonight I was asked to attend the crash call. So I ran my little legs all the way there. I was as far away from it as I possibly could be, which was not a vibe and I do not run. But in this situation, I did run. I attended it. Um, I don't really know what to say about it, but it wasn't pleasant. The patient had to be rapid tranquilized, which is when they are calmed down with medication which is injected into them if they've refused oral medication first you always offer that first um it wasn't pretty it wasn't nice it certainly wasn't enjoyable i've never been in a situation where that many staff have had to restrain a patient before um and yeah it, i don't want to say traumatic because that sounds a little bit extreme but it's definitely eye-opening but also nice to know that the skills that i've learned during my restraint training I can put into practice and then after that I returned back to my ward that I was working on I had a little debrief with one of the nurses which was nice they just sat me down talked me through like what had kind of happened on that ward if I was all right if I was injured if any of those injuries needed seen to which luckily they didn't I am really absolutely fine which is good and a relief and then after that, I just went back to work and then I was floating. And when you're floating, it means you're basically a member of staff that floats around the ward and does any tasks that need doing. So if someone wants a hot drink, I can make them a hot drink. If a member of staff who is on a one-to-one -one wants a break, I can swap out with those for a few minutes whilst I go to the toilet or get a drink. And after that, I sung loudly in the car and I drove home. So that was what my shift was like this evening. And I hope that has given you a bit of an insight if you were interested into what my responsibilities are as a mental health support worker or a healthcare assistant, because I know that being called a healthcare assistant, if you're comparing it to a general hospital, they're two very, very different roles. And I didn't have much of an understanding of that myself before getting into this job, but I really, really enjoy the work, what I do. So I hope that shed some light on it for anyone who was confused. I also really, really hope you enjoyed this video, which I am going to end here before I head into the house and go straight to bed because I'm shattered. If you did, please give it a like, comment and subscribe down below. And other than that, I look forward to seeing you all very soon in the next video. Goodbye.